on today, y'all. Welcome to the Rampage. Today, unfortunately, <laughs> our engineer Andy is missing, so it is me on the board, engineering. You know, just doing doing a thing. But um, yeah, you already know what you're listening to. This is the Rampage on WBCR.net. Duh. If you're listening, uh, we appreciate you like always. Um, I'm your host, Mirad. Uh, I told y'all the engineer's missing today, but we have Stacy. There is no camera, but shout out Stacy. She still came anyway. Hey guys. Hi Stacy. And we also have a guest. He's sitting in. He's wearing a trench coat and a newspaper and sunglasses. And he's sitting in the corner trying not to be noticed. His name is EJ. Hi EJ. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome. What's going on? We're good, good. Oh yeah, right. And Stacy, whenever we have a guest, what do we do? We always got treats. We always got treats. This week, I restocked the treats tin. I got the cookie tin for y'all. And yeah, we're going to give it out to EJ. So yeah, woo. woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can take one. It's kind of hard to open, not going to lie. I'm gonna but take you know. First. Do you want to take first? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> when you first saw like the tin <laughs> can, did you think that there were sewing supplies in there? <laughs> I definitely thought there was some supplies in there, but I opened it and there was actually cookies, and I was like, oh, this is shocking. And my mom was just like, you know, yeah, you could use it if you want to put stuff in it. That's fine. Just take out the cookies. I was like, okay, cool. Sounds good, girl. So, yeah, that is where the cookie tin came from. You could put it wherever. Yeah, yeah, I'll just take it back. Um, I'm scrolling to find my notes, y'all. Hold on. <laughs> One second, one second. Uh, where are we, where are we? I really hope my laptop don't die on me because, uh-uh. Okay, so. Where are we, where are we? Right, so, um, if you're listening, you're listening to us on WBCR.net. Love y'all, thank y'all for tuning in every week live. Um, you can follow us on Instagram to keep up with this show as well as other shows we have at the station. It's WBCR underscore CUNY on Instagram. And you can watch full-length episodes. There are two full-length episodes that are out on YouTube because finally. I edited them. Guys, I edited finally. You know, it took it took so long for me to accept the fact that I had to edit my own show. But, you know, it is what it is. And we're here now. Um, you can find those full-length episodes at WBCR underscore CUNY on YouTube. So please watch. Please watch. Because I've been bothered about the YouTube thing so much. Please watch. I put so much effort <laughs> into those videos. Please watch them. Thank you. And of course, if you want to keep up with our show, you can follow us on Instagram at the Rampage WBCR. You can DM us for advice. We're not professionals, but you know we'll try to answer your needs. Um, and you can also email us at the Rampage WBCR at gmail.com. We're trying to get the advice segment thing going. We want to hear from the community. So, you know, if you need help, you can ask us. You could definitely ask us. Um, so I like to do my visual descriptions for the people who can't see. We don't got a camera, so it might be helpful for everybody who can't see. Um, I'm wearing a blue hijab. I'm wearing two clips. You can't really see them, but I'm wearing a hat. I'm wearing a black hat. Um, I'm wearing a gray hoodie. Blue. There's blue lettering on the hoodie that says you matter. Um, I'm wearing gray pants. They got white stripes on them. And I'm wearing very mom looking, very grandma looking slip on shoes because I was in a rush this morning. Don't judge me. Thank you very much. Um, do any of the guests want to do a visual description? Does anybody else want to do visual descriptions or should we just get to it? What do y'all think? I mean, I'm wearing a basic outfit, black Nikes, Air Maxes, um, dark blue navy jeans and a black Nike hoodie. All right. What about you, EJ, if you want to do it? Um... I'm wearing a black hoodie, a hat, uh-huh. black pants. <laughs> All black, black everything. Shirt. That's what it's given. All black everything. No, but I have everything. on white shoes, though. I have on sambas. Okay. He got on. Okay. Yeah, he do have on white shoes, y'all. I'm sorry. My fault, gangsta. So I, I kind of want to be noticed. Okay. I didn't mean to, you know, attack you. I didn't mean to, you know, make you feel away. My fault. My fault. Okay. But today, I'm going to be talking. Today, I'm going to be yelling, actually. You know, I'll try to be calm, but, you know, it might be the rampage today, for real, for real. We'll see. We'll see how the day goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, so, we don't have any definitions to start today. 
But I do want to say that we have a responsibility to each other, whether we like it or not, right? We're all human beings. Um, as soon as, like, we're born, as soon as whatever, we have other people caring for us, and we have to care for other people. That's just, like, how life works, you know? In order to be cared for, you got to care about other people. And it's just, like, you know, we keep it keeps going around and around and around. That's literally, like, how we keep the earth spinning, right? People caring for each other, people doing things for each other. That's how it works because it's literally impossible to do everything by yourself. If you say that you can do everything by yourself, you're literally lying. Like, give it up. Stop it. Enough. Thank you. <sighs> okay, so. And because we need other people, obviously we need support. Everybody in this life needs to be supported. You need people, people to teach you, people to care for you, um, people to hire you, people to work for you, people to work with you. You need you need people to do this stuff. Like you can't you can't learn everything on your own. That's literally it's not how it works. It's very very impossible to just like do everything on your own. Like I said. <sighs> That's something that I've learned recently too. Right. Do you want to elaborate on this notion actually? Yeah, go ahead. So like, I don't know, when I was younger, I thought like, oh yeah, like I don't need other people. I could do things on my own. Especially when it came down to like conflict with other people. I was like I don't I don't need you I could do it myself yeah. and it, if it's hard I'll figure it out all right I know me I could figure it out but then as I got older I realized like relationships with people are very important to have and it's very hard to do things on your own especially considering the fact that like in this day and age like there is so much on our plates like like, for example, like, a single mother, that's hard to do. Or, like, is. working yep. full-time and going to school, that's hard. It's it's just hard to balance everything. So I feel like it's important to, like, maintain relationships with other people. And on top mm -hmm. of that, like, understand that, like, you're not... It's not easy to balance everything on your own. So, like, don't think that you don't need other people because you do. Right. 100%. EJ, right. Yes. Yeah, yes. give it Snap up for Stacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about you, EJ? Do you have anything to say so far? Um, as far as needing other people, I'd say that it's definitely a plus, but sometimes you do need that little bit of character development for you to really internalize what it is that you're going through and, um, and like, push through it. And I know that some support, like, would be good, but at the end of the day, like, Sometimes you have to deal with your own problems, but more times than not, you have, like, a little safety net for you to fall back on. That is true. That the support true. system. Uh -huh. Support systems are so important because, again, we all got to be there for each other at some point in our lives. I don't want to say that everything in this life is transactional, but, like, most things are. Like, you have siblings. You do a favor for your sibling. They do one back for you. That's, that's literally how just, like, life goes on, you know? You help them when they need you. They help you when you need them. That's that's kind of how life goes, you know? And, again, this whole thinking that you could do everything on your own with no support, you're just like, yeah, yeah, I got it, I could do it, I could do it, I could do it. It literally comes from Western individualism, you know? It's mad, like, being self-made, pulling yourself up from the bootstraps. Like, millionaires and billionaires, they say it all the time, but nobody ever actually is fully and completely self-made. Somebody, somewhere, had to take a chance on you, had to invest in you, had to believe in you, so that way they could get you where you need to go. Like, come on, y'all. It's not the whole self-made thing. Like, it don't even, it don't even make sense, really. It really doesn't. <sighs> so this brings me to my next point, which is that hyper-individualism and hyper-independence, which kind of comes from the whole being self-made, not relying on anybody. I got it out the mud by myself. I did it by myself. This, this, and that. Like... The whole, this all comes from, like, why should I help anybody? I don't owe anybody anything. This whole mentality, like, it drives me literally insane. But aside from it driving me insane, it's going to burn you out and literally kill you. Because, again, you can't do everything by yourself. As much as you would like to, like, you can't, you can't do everything by yourself. And, like, not caring about people is just, like... I feel like not caring about people is also kind of embedded in this mentality. Like, I'm so absorbed in myself. It's very selfish. That's what it is. And I think that's what bothers me. It's so selfish. Why Why are you moving like this? Why are you moving like you don't care about people, like you don't need people? That's not true, bro. Give it up. 
Stop, stop lying to yourself. Give it up. And to me, it's like, yeah, you're literally just pretending. You're pretending to not care. You're pretending that you're cold hearted, that you don't care, that you don't have feelings. Like it's so old. It's so corny. It's so like you sound dumb. Stop. Please stop. Please stop. Literally, please stop. That kind of reminds me of something that my mom said about someone. Uh She was basically saying, like, she was talking about a specific person, but I'll generalize it. Mm -hmm. Basically, we're like, if they don't want to receive things from other people, then that's because they don't give Mm. towards others. That's a very good point. It's a very good point. I'm not going to lie. Again, when you, like... I feel like when you open yourself up and when you are more giving, people will be giving to you because, again, that's literally how it works. I do a favor for you. You do a favor for me. I look out for you. You look out for me because now it's like, I don't know. (laughs) I'm taking an anthropology class, and she talked about, like, the different kinds of relationships, and she said most relationships, there's, like, balanced transactions. There's, what's the other one? There's a kind of giving where it's like, it's three kinds of giving. That's what she said. It wasn't three kinds of relationships. There's giving where it's like you give and you don't expect anything. And you don't expect anything back at all. And then there's giving where it's balanced. Like, so you give and then you expect at some point you're going to get it back. And then there's like the market principle where it's like you give something that's less than the value of the actual thing. So sometimes, you know how like when you go in the store and you're trying to like haggle with the person. Or have you ever been in like a street market? You can't what? Like an investment? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Where it's like you pay like less for a thing, but the expected value that you're supposed to get from that thing is like a lot more. Mm. I feel like my anthropology professor is <laughs> going to explain this a lot better to y'all. Shout out to my anthropology professor. Her name is Professor Ferens. She's my girl. I love her. I hope she sees this. Anyways, um, yeah. If we don't care about people, to your point, they won't care about us. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. if you're not open, if you're not willing to do things for people, why would anybody want to do anything for you? Right. So it's just like, you know, it don't it don't make sense. <sighs> Another thing. What was I going to say next? Um, yeah. So bad things happen to people all the time, right? Bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people. But, like, stuff happens to us all the time. And over time, it could... It has the ability to make you jaded, right? And you're like, mm, I don't want to help anybody. I'm going through a bad time in my life right now. Everybody else should be sad, too. Like, if I'm upset, if I'm sad, everybody else should be sad, too. But, like, you can't let the world make you jaded. Because once you're jaded, then other people can become jaded, too, after being hurt. And it's like, nobody will help anybody, you know? So it's like, that's not the kind of world that we want. That's not the kind of world that we want for each other. So you have to care about other people. Even if you're, like, going through something, even if you're, like, hurting or whatever. Like, you gotta, you gotta care about people. This is, this is, like, I'm gonna keep going back to this point. You have to care about people, y'all. We just, we just gotta care. We just gotta care. Um, yeah, not caring doesn't benefit anybody at all. So, how much does it really take from you to care about anybody or about anything? Like, What's something that really bothers me, bro? Like, people who don't care about anything. Have you ever met somebody who cares about literally nothing? Yeah. It's like you ask them, and they're just, like, they're the most boring human being you've ever met in your entire life. Like, n- like nothing inspires you. Nothing makes you, nothing brings you joy. Like, nothing, bro. Like, literally nothing. <laughs> like, what is going on? Like, I really want to know, how do you live your life when nothing, you care about nothing? You care about nothing. I think how people these days just think it's cool to not care about things. I don't know why. That's just something that I've noticed on, like, Instagram. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of people saying, like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, you can't hurt me. And I think that kind of goes back to what we talked about in the first episode where people, like, put up this front where they're like, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. But as, like, a kind of, like, a layer of protection – Mm. But like it doesn't really it doesn't really benefit you to not care because if you don't care and you perpetuate this image of yourself that you don't care, why should other people care about you? Like again, we keep I'm going to keep talking about caring because y'all, we need to care about each other. We need we need to care. We need to care. Um yeah. So this leads me to my next point. I can't force nobody to care. I can't put a gun to your head and make you care about people or make you empathize with other human beings. 
Like, I can't, I can't do that. You know, it's either you do care about people or you don't care about people. Like, it is, it is what it is. But you should. You should care about people because, one, it's the right thing to do. Two, it's the human thing to do. You have to care, bro. You just, you do. You have to care about the people directly around you. You have to care about, like, if you don't care, then what do you have, really? Again, it's how the world goes around. If you don't care, nobody else is going to care. So, like, come on. Come on. And to my next point, we have a responsibility. Again, I said earlier in the episode, we just have a responsibility to the people around us, right? So we have a responsibility because we care about people. We have a responsibility to them, right? So if we care, wait, hold on. I just want to, I just want to, <laughs> I want to make sure I'm saying this right. Yeah. So we have a responsibility to care about the people around us, right? Because they're directly around us. They're directly affected by us. We're directly affected by them. Something is happening to your neighbor or to your family or whatever. Then it affects you too in a way. Does it not? It does. So anyways, we have responsibility, especially to all my Muslims, you know, we have to we have to care. And we have to stand up to injustice whenever we see it, right? We have a responsibility. That's just how it goes. If you can't fix it with your own hands, you have to fix it with your tongue, right? You have to say something against it. You have to speak out against it, right? And if not your tongue, then at the very least, you have to acknowledge that it is wrong inside of yourself, right? We have to, again. If we see something wrong, we gotta we gotta do something about it, y'all. That's just that's how it works. Again, that's how it works. You want somebody to stand up for you, you have to stand up for other people. Again, balance, right? You gotta give, you gotta take. That's that's how it all works. That's how it all works. So I'm saying this. I really do feel like it's just me talking. Damn, y'all. I wanna invite y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like I'm literally just <laughs> ranting. So I would like to open this up further. You know, so it's not just me yelling for an hour you know maybe maybe i'll get ej to yell too ej been real calm you mm. know maybe maybe he'll start yelling too i don't know but yeah so how are y'all feeling about what i'm saying so far do you feel like we have a responsibility to stand up or to do something about injustice how do y'all feel about that well you mentioned something earlier about like at least acknowledge that it's wrong which mm -hmm. is something that i agree with mm -hmm. and i remember in like one of our previous episodes mm -hmm. I think it was a mental health check-in episode where I said, like, like for me personally, I'm not, like, educated on the topic of what's going on between Palestine. Is it Palestine or Palestine? Palestine. Palestine and Israel. But, like, I at least acknowledge that, like, what's going on isn't mm -hmm. right. But, like, I don't want to say something not knowing, like, the full information and mm -hmm. then, like, you know, I don't know how to explain yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I think it makes sense. Like, again, at the very least, like, you can acknowledge that what's going on is wrong, right? That's, I think that's all that people really want from you. You know, like, you see something wrong and you call it out for what it is. Yeah. That if you're not educated, then you're not educated. That's fine. You know, there's time for you to go and educate yourself. If anything, this is the time to go and educate yourself. So I don't think anybody's, like, mad at you about not being educated. It's not, it's not your country. It's not your area of expertise. So it's like, you know. But at the very least, just, like, acknowledge that what's going on is wrong, you know? That's it's the first step. The first step is <laughs> literally to self-awareness is the first step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This thing is wrong. That's it. What about you, EJ? As for me, I can only really speak on the injustices that are, like, around my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I've lived in Brooklyn for 21 years, about to be 22 in January. Woo! Yeah, January 23rd. But I don't know. I feel like everybody has a decision, but sometimes the decision that you choose could end up getting you in harm's way. For example, like my local hood, like neighbor neighborhood, like there'd be like some like gang activity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes like you'd see it, but you really can't speak on it because that's frowned upon in like the community and like in your friend group, like depending on who you are. Mm -hmm. So like at the end of the day, like you have a decision, like you can speak on it or you can just take like a bystander's watch to it. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, I've taken that like bystander watch. But yeah. you do have a decision and you could choose to speak out on it or not. But I chose yeah. not to. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. It's also like 
their gangs in your neighborhood you don't want them to come and harm you right. so like it makes kind of makes sense in that respect i didn't mean it like in that <laughs> way like report your local gang member please snitch <laughs> on the gang members in your neighborhood i didn't mean it like that I play like superheroes <laughs> <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> like Batman just busting gang activity. No, I, <laughs> I didn't mean that. Um, what I do mean is like if you see. How do I explain it? Yeah, if you see injustice going on somewhere, some part of the world, especially because bro, we're in the U.S., we're mad removed from like all the things that happen in the world, like all the injustices that happen across the world. So unless you're really like from that area or from that mm-hmm. part of the world, you you really wouldn't know otherwise. So it's very hard to, you're very removed, I would say, in the U.S. Again, the U.S. doesn't fight like any of their wars here at home. The wars are always fought in other people's countries, so they destroy other people's homes and that kind of thing. So it's like, you know, we're very removed from conflict. That's what I would say. Um, I had a point with this. I swear to God, I had a point with this. What was I going to say? Oh, I would just like to add that you are really removed because of social media, but there's a lot of misinformation that you could end up believing the wrong thing or Mm -hmm. you might get persuaded into believing the wrong thing Yeah. or not even seeing the full picture. Yeah. 100%. So I think that's even worse than not knowing is supporting the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah. Because it's people, again, like context, whoa, like context is really so crazy Mm -hmm. because... Without it, people, it's so many people. Have y'all seen the celebrities? The celebrities coming out and signing letters saying we need to support Israel. Like that, that is so scary to me. It's just like, damn, bro, nobody in your corner was like, yo, bro, do a quick Google search on the history of Palestine. Like nobody, nobody (laughs) pulled you aside and was like, yo, you know, you might want to rethink that. You might want to, you know, like search some stuff up. Yo, bro, that'd be so scary because like, you really could be supporting the wrong individual. I think it was Malcolm X who said it. Like, the media will have you believing that the oppressed are oppressors. Yeah. And the oppressors are the oppressed. Yo. Okay, another thing. Side note. Have y'all seen, like, the IDF, <laughs> the Israeli military making, like, little TikToks and stuff, talking oh, about, no. like, please support us? <laughs> oh, my God. No. If you go on Twitter, they are acting a damn mess on that app. They're posting all kinds of misinformation, all kinds of, like... They have soldiers doing thirst trap videos. Like, it's it's so crazy over there. Oh, wait, the no, lengths, I think I have seen that. The lengths that this country is going to, to, like, get people to support them is literally insane. I literally saw, insane. I saw a YouTube ad the other day of, uh-huh. like, it threw me off and it kind of made me uncomfortable. Yeah. Because it was, like, football related. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why? They just used something that's supposed to be, like, lighthearted football uh-huh. to, like, send out a message and be like oh yeah like hamas kidnapped their children and oh i was God. like oh. that just that felt eerie because i'm yeah. like bro i just want to watch a gaming video like yeah yeah you just used that so scary, to bro. my 15 seconds of an unskippable ad. literally <laughs> right can we talk about the unskippable oh my god we only have a minute left before we got to go to break but i'm going to talk about the unskippable ads really quick i had an ad blocker for mad long it was working <laughs> so good bro so good and then youtube hit me with the warning they was like yeah stop using that. i saw a screenshot of that <laughs> it pissed me off so bad they said you got three more videos to keep doing this <laughs> and then it's a wrap damn and then it's a wrap and then i got to my last video i was like okay i don't care scary <laughs> scary ass youtube like i don't care why i tried to play the next video it would not play oh refused <laughs> to play bro i was like damn all right, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna let you in on a little trick. Uh-huh. If you have a MacBook Pro from like 2020 to like now, uh-huh. and it has like the touch bar, right. you can like scrub through <gasps> the ad on your touch bar. Wow. <laughs> and that's what I've been doing for like the greater part of like three years. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. Amazing. I don't have that, unfortunately. I have an Acer computer, but for all my Mac people, y'all can definitely tap in and use that. Uh, but now it's time for the break. So we love y'all. This is. Victoria Monet's How Does It Feel? And we'll see y'all after this. Bye. Sorry, y'all. I had to bring y'all back. Hello, hello. That was kind of unexpected, the second song. But, you know, it's okay. You know, it happens. People people do things unexpectedly. I like to be a little bit spontaneous sometimes. Just a little bit. You know, not not too much. Just, just a little bit. But we're back at it. And oh, why am I lifting this? 
was kind of crazy. I was just a teeny bit crazy. Hold on, y'all. Hold on while I get my notes back up. All right. So, like I was saying, yeah, we have to acknowledge the injustices that we see in our communities. Not gang busting like Batman, like EJ said earlier. Mm-hmm. We're not doing that. But the reason why we acknowledge injustice is because we care. And why do we care about people? Because we love them, right? Usually. Yes. Mostly. Yeah. <laughs> we love people, right? So the way that I like to do things is like make sure that everything you do comes from love. And I say this with love. Like, I love y'all. I care about y'all. So like, you know, I love you. I care about you. I'm trying to tell y'all something, you know, that will benefit you. That's that's kind of how it goes, right? So everything comes from love, right? So if we want justice, what is justice? I think Cornell West said this quote where he said, justice is love openly or love for society. Because when you love somebody, you want to do right by them, right? You want to make sure that nobody like is violating them. You want to make sure that they're good. So when we are in this pursuit of justice in our communities or even outside of that, even outside of where we're from, when we're seeking justice for people, we are trying to do right by them. You know, we're not trying to impose our idea of whatever on them, not impose our idea of freedom, like how the United States like loves to do. We're not trying to impose our idea of whatever on them. We're trying to do right by them if they've been violated, right? So what else? What was I going to say? Right. So, you know, the president at this college who, you know, it's just like there's like a mounting beef that I'm having <laughs> with this lady. <laughs> with the, the more school. and the more that I find out about this lady, the more and more she pisses me off. And the more and more she feels like a supervillain. Like, literally, she feels like a supervillain. And I want her gone so bad. So bad, so bad, so bad. But going back to this lady and about caring, right? She has this whole idea of having an ethic of care, right? Ms. Michelle Alexander president of Brooklyn College has an ethic of care that she preaches to her faculty members in her meetings that she's always talking about, right? You have to have an ethic of care towards your students. You have to have an ethic of care, right? That's that's what she keeps that's what she keeps saying. But she don't have any. This lady don't have any. She keeps talking about caring and care. You don't have any, bro. You have none. You literally don't care. You have oof, This lady makes me so mad. Oh my gosh, she makes me so mad. She don't have any, right? And she keeps talking about the ethic of care, the ethic of care, the ethic of care. Oh, okay. So, the lady, she don't care. I'm going to tell y'all how she don't care, because she don't. So, she doesn't care about her students. She doesn't care about the student body on this campus at all. Not even a little bit. She doesn't care about the high school students that we have on this campus. I don't know if y'all know, but there's a high school on here on the mm-hmm. West Quad. Brooklyn College Academy, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Minors, bunch of minors in a building on this campus, right? So... If this lady cares, she doesn't care about the people in the neighborhood either. Because if she cared, I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to tell y'all. If she cared, she would have alerted the entire community about the lady who showed up here with a gun. That was a month ago by this point. Over a month ago by this point, right? She would have alerted the community about somebody carrying a gun at any point within the past month. This lady had more than a month to address this issue, and she still hasn't. To this day, she still hasn't. She has not named this woman who showed up. She hasn't talked about it. She hasn't talked about safety in the community. She hasn't talked about... She literally hasn't mentioned her name, her bringing the gun to the campus. She hasn't done anything. She hasn't said anything. Nothing at all. Because she's not good at her job, y'all. She's not good at her job. Because if she was good at her job, I'm going to tell you what she would have done. She would have made a very public speech or a very public event, conference, press conference, whatever, whatever, anything, even at the very least, she would have sent out an email to the school community because I know she loved doing that. She loved doing that. That's the only thing she can do, send out a mass email. She would have made a public speech or a public event or something renouncing this lady's actions, right? Because nobody should show up to a college campus with a gun or outside a college campus with a gun. What are you doing? Even that is very illegal in this state. The woman who did that is an attorney. Can you imagine? She's an attorney and she showed up to a college campus with a gun. You know that's illegal. Did anything happen to that lady, by the yeah, way? I was just about to ask. Are you following her case? Right. I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about what I found out because I'm mad at that lady too. But I think I'm more upset at the president. But I'm going to tell y'all. So basically, what had happened was 
She turned herself in to the police department the day, it was at like 2, 3 in the morning, she turned herself in. And I think she had a court date. Um, yeah, she had a court date in Brooklyn. I remember there was like a protest that happened outside of the courthouse mm-hmm. where she had her court date. I don't know what's going on after the fact, but you want to hear something really crazy? Mm-hmm. One of the advisors for the mayor, imagine the mayor's top advisors, Eric Adams' top advisor, one of his advisors went and had tea with this lady. Wow. Met up with this lady, had tea with her. And then after this meeting, do you know what the councilwoman said? Her name is Ina Birkinov, by the way, y'all, just just so you know. So we're very clear. But I don't like to- calling her by her name. I call her the lady. But her <laughs> name is Ina Birkinov. Do you know what she said after this meeting? Mm-mm. What? She said, it's good to know that I have friends in the mayor's office. Something to that effect. Damn. Wow. Can you imagine? It's important to be caring. The mayor's <laughs> office. <laughs> it's important to be caring. It's crazy. But can you imagine the mayor's office is telling this lady, yeah, you know, we're friends. Made her feel like we're friends. And he's supporting her. After showing up to a college campus with a gun? We're friends with people like that? Eric Adams? This is this is your administration? What's going on, bro? What's 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 going on, bro? But anyways, okay, that lady pisses me off. <laughs> I don't want to talk about her no more. We're back to Miss Alexander because she's here. I can talk about her. I know more about what's going on with her. Okay, so she says that she cares about the student body. She don't made that very clear. Still hasn't said anything about what happened. Made that very clear. And then there was what's it called? So the SJP on this campus, Student Justice for Palestine, I think they stormed a faculty meeting to talk to her about this because she didn't talk about this at all. When they went to her office and they brought this up to her, she, what did she do? I'm trying to remember what she did. They asked her to resign and she said no comment. Mm. Yeah. She literally refused, you know, whatever. So anyways, not the point. So she doesn't care about the student body. She doesn't care about the high schoolers that you know, are on this campus either. She doesn't care about the local community either. Fine. She doesn't care about Palestinians who are dying because if she did, she wouldn't block the SJP from trying to organize at a time when their presence is needed the most. Not to mention there's, like, an attack on SJPs all over the country, I want to say. Like, Ron DeSantis, he blocked. He's like, the SJPs are not allowed to exist in Florida, at colleges Mm -hmm. in Florida, something like that. And Columbia University, they said... They suspended the SJP there, and they suspended the, stu- the what's it called? Jewish Voice for Peace at Columbia as well. So they suspended both those organizations who are doing work, who were holding protests, who were doing their thing over there, right? So there's that. Um, what else does this lady not care about? Yeah, hold on. She doesn't care about doing right by the community because, like I said, y'all, justice is doing right by people that you care about, right? So she don't care about the community because if she did, she would take a second to think, you know, maybe I messed up really bad. I should have said something when this first happened, right? But now it's been a week, two weeks, three weeks. I don't know if it's worth saying anything. I don't know. I kind of messed up, you know, like I really, I don't know. I don't know. It's like, you know, she didn't say anything, right? The least she could have done is take into consideration how reckless, how harmful her actions were to the community that you're supposed to help and that you're supposed to represent. She was supposed to resign, right? Because you messed up. You messed up big time. You could have had a school shooter on this campus. Like, come on. You, you messed up so bad, like real bad. If you ain't got nobody around you, I'm going to tell you, girl. Like, you messed up really bad. You need to resign. You need to go. Like, literally, there's nothing you can do to make it right at this point. That's it. Do not pass go. Do not talk to nobody. Don't have no more meetings. No more. Enough. It's enough. Okay. So, back to... Yeah, so, this lady don't care. I don't care about her no more. That's it. On to the next topic. So, we talked about this a little bit earlier before the break, how... People in this country were so removed from conflict that happens elsewhere, right? Because we literally live in the U.S. We don't ever deal with any of the consequences of those actions directly. We're very far removed from it, right? 
So, so many people in this country, because of that, are tuned out of the suffering of other people. Like, have y'all ever thought about that? Like, I don't know. I mean, EJ, you're Haitian, so yeah. I think you can kind of testify to this. Like, nobody knows what's going on in Haiti, bro. Yeah. Why does nobody know what's going on over there? When the U.S., like, the U- you know what the U.S. is doing over there, bro? Like, it's mad crazy. Um, no. No? <laughs> Okay, I don't know too too much about Haiti, but I know that they definitely have a hand in what's going on right now. In what? In like the government being corrupt. Oh yeah. The gang activity. Yeah. That kind of thing. I know that the United States. I feel like if you look hard enough, it's always one of the colonial powers. It's always it's I was always either Britain or the United States. It's just like, mm, I know it's you. I knew it was you. I knew it was you. Or it's China controlling U.S. Right. Let's. <laughs> Is that too? I mean, you owe China so much. Oh, my God, bro. That's the thing that really gets me, too. You have billions of dollars to loan to Israel that you could give to them in aid. But you got citizens over here starving. You got homeless people over here starving. Mm -hmm. Like, where are y'all pulling this money from? And you owe China, man, money. Where are you getting the money for war from? Oh, my God. I remember when they... Oh, sorry. No, you can go. (laughs) I was just going to say, I remember when they said once that they don't have money and then, like... I, maybe a week later they sent money to ukraine and i was like where did y'all get that Just money from? i ask myself this question all the time where does the united states get pull this money from tax you dollars have, <laughs> well yeah tax dollars but like you say you don't have money for education you don't have money for student loans you don't have money for health care you don't have money for this we don't have money for that we don't have money for this we don't have money for that but you got money for war always you got money to loan to Israel always. Israel, co- oh, bro, I'm about to change my name to Israel so I can get some money. Like, what's yeah. going on, bro? <laughs> Why Israel could always get money from you, but your citizens can't, bro? And I think Mr. Beast just spent like thirty million dollars on like feeding the homeless just now. Like, he's just like a money glitch. Yeah, bro. Listen. I don't know. He might even be working at that office where they're giving out the money. <laughs> That's why he has so much of it. I mean, good for him. Someone said they I print guess. money. Duh. <laughs> 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 I mean, they do be kind of right, though. That would, like You kind of ate that. I'm not going to lie. You kind of <laughs> ate that a little bit. But, yeah, bro, it's just like, bro. Like, that is so disappointing to me, bro. We have so much money in this country. We take so many taxes, bro. Income tax in this country is 35. In this state, I think, it's 35% of your paycheck. 35% of the money that you work for is taken out for income tax. Income tax. And it's like they go and they spend this money for war. They don't spend money on anything that you want or anything that you need. Bro, why do I need missiles killing Palestinian children? I don't need that. Come on. Like, come on, bro. Come on. Okay, on to my next point. It's a lot of people here in this country who feel like, yo, why my notes just disappear, bro? Crazy, yo. Crazy. Me and my notes are beefing today. I don't know what's going on. But, hold on. I think we're here. Yeah. So, it's so many people, again, we're so far removed from conflict that happens elsewhere. It's just like, people can actively choose not to pay attention when people are dying somewhere. Or whenever suffering is going on, they're like, that doesn't concern me. That's not my business. It's not my people. It's not my country. I don't need to pay attention. And it's just like, how? To me, it's just, it don't make no sense to me because I don't know, bro. Maybe I'm just very Sudanese. And, like, I don't know. I always have to. I don't want to say I always have to know. But, like, I know when other people in my family are, like, going through it. I know when other people in my family are, like, having troubles. So it's like... I don't know. It's not It's not that crazy. I know in other countries are going through stuff. I feel like it's not It's not that crazy to, like, be in the know. Or maybe, like, find sources or talk to people or follow people in those places where that's happening so you can get, like, an accurate picture of what's going on. But, like, I don't know. Even when it's happening, even when... Am I rambling? Is this making any sense? Hold on. Okay. Even when the media is covering whatever is going on in another country, like war in another country, for example, like, you can't even be bothered. It's your own media. Like, you can't even be bothered to look at what's going on. You can't even be bothered to listen. I don't know, bro. Like, I know everyone's like, yeah, you know, the news is so negative every single day. It's something bad happening somewhere. 
But it's just like, I don't know, bro. Maybe you should. Maybe you should be informed about that. Like, yeah, it sucks. No one's saying, like, immerse yourself in it 24-7. But, like, yo, it's people in those countries. They don't get a break from what's going on. True. They don't get a break from being bombed. They don't get a break from starvation. They don't get a break from being under siege. Like, they don't get a break from any of this stuff. So it's like, the very least you could do is just, like, know what's going on. That's my whole thing. Just know what's going on. Like, I don't know. I don't think that's too much to ask, to just find out what's going on. Even if you don't know, find out. Talk to people that are reporting live. Maybe not reporting live, but, like, talk to people that are covering it. Find out. Not, whoa. Girl. Hold on. (laughs) Find out sources that are covering it. Find out, you know, accounts to follow, people to follow, news organizations that are covering it. Like, you know, that's... The least you could do is just find out what's going on. That's it. We're not asking you to become an expert. We're not asking you to read 50 million books. We're not asking you to do that. Just be in the know. Be in the know. That's it. Um, what's another thing? What was I going to say? Yeah. Um, another thing is that, like, you know, especially if you are the child of an immigrant, that could have been you. Like, if you're Palestinian and if you live... In the U.S., that could have been you. I'm not saying every single Palestinian is not talking about it or not, whatever. But, like, if you're from a home country, like, you know, and you know, like, it's corrupt out there. You know life isn't sweet out there. Like, come on. That literally could have been you. If your parents didn't leave for whatever reason, if they didn't leave, that could have been you that's dealing with that. That could have been you that's living under that. Would you, wouldn't you want people to know what's going on, to know what you're dealing with, to know that the conditions here suck? I feel like I would want to know. I would want people to know. I would want people to care. Again, we're going back to caring, y'all. We have to care about other people. Even if they look nothing like us. For the simple fact that they're other people. We have to care. We have to. Um, What else was I going to say? I was going to go on this whole tangent. But I think I'm going to skip it. But yeah. We have to care. Especially about other people, especially when they look nothing like us, especially when we don't know what the hell the issue. We have to care. That's it. Find out who the people are suffering. Well, find out the people who are suffering and just like find out what's going on with them. That's it. We have to care. And if hearing about all these things, if hearing about all this injustice, it makes you upset or it makes you angry, that's the right reaction to have. Of course, it's going to make you upset. If it doesn't make you upset, then that's, like, an issue, you know? No human being deserves to go without safety. No human being deserves to go without clean water, food, shelter, clothing, or be forced out of their homes because of war or violence, right? Nobody deserves that. So if you care, you should be angry. But don't just keep that anger inside. Find other people, you know? Put the anger somewhere useful. Find other people who care. Find other people who care, because I'm sure it's not just you who cares. Find other people who care and who are angry and who are upset and do something. That's the whole point. That's why That's why people do protests. That's why people call and email their representatives in government. That's why people volunteer and do stuff and join organizations that literally cater to this whole thing, you know? Literally, <laughs> I think I will end on this note. Revolution is literally a bunch of people that care enough to organize and do something about their conditions, right? That's literally all it is. It's a bunch of people. They all care about one similar issue or one issue in particular, and they focus their energy on it, and they do something about it. We need y'all to care. We need y'all to come together and do something about it. So it all starts starts and ends with caring, right? Right? Hello, people in the studio. Yes, it does. (laughs) Right. It all starts with caring. Um, It all ends with caring. Um, Yeah. And now we need you to care. So will you care? I hope so. I hope we end. And on that note, I think the show, we've wrapped up. But if anybody else has any comments, do y'all have anything you want to say? Anything to contribute? Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> I don't have anything to contribute. I was going to say something. Uh-huh. I had a thought earlier, but I'm trying to remember it, though. 
Uh, oh, you said... The thought I had was, like, the reason why some people don't care is probably because, like you said, we're so far removed from it. They probably... Like I said in the on the mental health episode, like, mm-hmm. for as long as, like, they're not involved in it, then they think, like, oh, it's not necessary for me to know because it has nothing to do with me. I'm yeah. not there or something like that. That's a thought that I had earlier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And again, it all goes back to these are human beings. They're just like you. And I think because... A lot of the media works to make these people other. They're like, oh, yeah, it's us. But they're them. They're over there. You know, like we don't we don't need to care about them because they're not us. They're not. What's it called? They're not over here. Like, why? Why do we need to care about them? This is regular. Right. Mm -hmm. It makes war. It makes poverty. It makes starvation. Like all these things like this. It makes it regular when it happens there, but not when it happens here. You know, so I think people kind of give into that a little bit like if you hear about something that happens in the middle east people just like come to expect it you know after a certain point they're just like yeah that's just what happens that's it it is what it is you know that's just what happens out there so people they just get so it's become so normal that they just you know they don't care they're just like yeah these are they're not human beings that just that's just what happens or so they yeah or they think it they don't think it's necessary to educate themselves or know what's yeah. going on at least. It's just like, yeah, that's been happening. So Yeah. What's next? What's new? That's been happening. But yeah, I think we need to remind ourselves and each other that what's it called? Um, they are human beings just like us and we have to care or else their conditions won't change. You know? The conditions of and these are regular people, like civilians, literally civilians. Like, again, we have to care about them. Otherwise, their conditions won't change. What's going on in their countries won't change unless a group of people come together and care enough to do something about it. Right? Yes. You're supposed to say right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to end the show today. So we love y'all. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate y'all so damn much. But yeah, I think we'll see y'all next week, same time. Next Wait, week no, is next Thanksgiving. week is Thanksgiving. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, love y'all. We'll, we'll see, see y'all the week, after. the week after. Same time, uh, same day. So yeah, bye. Bye, guys. Bye. I think my mic is still on.